Hello, this is Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery. In the backyard, I've got a whole bunch of paint I put aside. I am going to try and use simple tools this time, like bamboo skewers that come in packages like this. Room essentials from, I don't know who it's from. Anyway, I want, this is a rest for whatever I want to put it in, and you could find anything like a box. Just rest something in like a box. This is an 8, 8 by 10 inch canvas. I could be using any size canvas and it wouldn't matter right at the moment. Smaller, if you're going to do this, is going to be better. This is my helping you, hopefully, <laughs> in the easiest way possible, <laughs> fingers are crossed, uh, to make escape. These are also other little scoops that I've cut from packaging. If, if you need help with that, ask somebody who's got more skills than you do. That was, uh, that's just the missing half is right on the other side. That was uh, lipstick and some moisturizer. Anyway, so I made this one out of an alcohol bottle. And what I'm going to do instead of using a conventional scoop, if you don't have one, and I recommend going to the dollar store and getting a set or five of the bucket and shovel because the shovels are great for all kinds of stuff. So what I want to do is show you how to make escape. And you want to start by making sure that your paint can spread as much as possible. And if you are one of those people who needs to put something underneath your painting, you could you could screw hooks into the corners, you could put a screw in there or a push pin, but I like to just put them up on the lids from cottage cheese containers, which work really well, and that's how I dry my paintings too. And then when it's ready, I can peel off the, the extra. So what I'm going to do with my sky at first is give myself some colors. And they don't have to be complicated. And they don't have to be in any particular order. But I am going to do myself and you a favor and show you that I'm going to use my OXO omelette turning spatula. But whatever you decide to spread your paint with is fine. And I'm going to grab some white paint. I would usually use my Anita's Metallic because I like how sheer it is. I'm just going to put a little white paint on. Now if you're mixing your paint up in cups, you know, just, just dribble some in place. Make sure you're covered well. I think glasses will be helpful. I can't usually see the difference. <laughs> there we go. I did just have somebody mowing the lawn out here, so there's probably going to be the odd bit or bob in my canvas. So as soon as I get that all covered with a layer of wet paint, which is going to help the, any paint I add to it spread more easily. I'm not going to worry about my edges right now. I'm just going to make sure my canvas is covered. And even if it wasn't, you could probably stick your finger in there, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Okay, so I want to add some more white into this, these colors, just because I'm going to go and level it out. And let it all relax out. Whatever it is, it's fine. There's a couple of ways to go about spreading these colors in the sky. Once you get to the edge, just let whatever you're using relax over it. I've got a turntable, so I'm lucky. And I want more of that color to come out of there, because I'm greedy. And once you start a little skin of paint coming out of whatever your container is, chances are you can get more. Now, if you're lucky, you'll be able to Get yourself some of these Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatulas, which I happen to love. And you can just take all of the paint right out of your container and put it where all the rest of the paint is. And it does not matter how you put it down. Not in my opinion, anyway. The more interesting, the better. Now, usually, for me, I would use something called an edge catcher, which is that schmutzy looking thing covered with paint. I want all of the paint, but I can't ever get it, so I'm going to have to be patient and give up now. <laughs> and I can put that container right into my bucket of water, which is a good place to keep it from setting up. And what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. One, I can use my bamboo skewer. I can put it in and pull it back and forth and blend what's going on in my sky. And that's probably going to work pretty well. And if I push a little bit of paint over the edge and it starts to fall down and I tap it very gently with my finger, then I will probably get some kind of coverage on my edges. 
Now when I do this with an edge catcher, I often have canvas showing at the edges, so I'm not too worried about that right now. And I am going to let all of that paint just flow right off onto the edge catcher. I'm not going to use an edge catcher to hold against the side, but as soon as that paint is on there, then I can dip my canvas edge right back into it. Pull that thread off. <laughs> and then I can do the same thing I want. Now I can use my bamboo skewer if I like the paint that I've got one place. I can roll that skewer, take some of that paint, put it someplace else. This is obviously a sunset sky. And any place you see canvas, you can just rest your skewer in and slide, sidle, sidle, that's a good word. You can sidle it up. Now when I've got enough paint on this skewer, I'm going to roll it up right here because I can. I'm going to put it right at the top of the canvas and use that paint anywhere that I see that I might want to fill in the edges. Because I don't like to have to use a frame if I don't have to, and I often don't. So just to show you, because you can, that edge catcher now contains that, that wonderful paint right there. And because I have a spatula, I can take it and put it right back on the canvas. And then if I want it to be even a little more organic, I'll just tilt the canvas again. Pretty much always a good idea to tilt it right onto an edge catcher because that way you really can use your paint as many times as you want. And if you see you've got something like that weird edge there, just tap your, tap your spatula, tap your bamboo skewer, tap your finger, tap whatever you want in there, trying not to expose any canvas. So there's my wild sky. And if I want to drag a few things across, I can. I could do that with a skewer or I could do it right now with the spatula. And what I want to do next is, ooh, I want to use that up. <laughs> I'm just going to put that right down there at the bottom right now. Because I can. Hey, I have a book called Because I Can. <laughs> it's on the Amazon link under the link tree underneath the video. If you go there, you'll find the Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatulas that I'm using, the little ones. You'll also find the OXO omelet turning spatula, which reminds me I had to put that back in the bucket. So now I have a choice. Do I want to spread any paint on the bottom half of this, and what do I want to use to put paint on? The dustpan is too wide, and I said I was going to use one of these two containers. So I think I'm just going to grab another one of the containers I just used, just because... Make sure it's kind of clean. It'd be better if it was clean every time. And uh, I've got, whoa, okay, that was wrong. That's what happens when you don't shake your paint before you use it. So always shake your paint if you have decided on the option of putting your paint in bottles. I keep a glass marble in my bottles. My paint pouring recipe is right below the video. When things are very separated, I shake them up very well. And I make sure that I have a nice selection. I'm almost out of brown. This is a dioxidine purple. It's just dark purple. That was a gold. You could use yellow. It does not matter so long as you're using a bunch of contrasting colors. Usually I would probably use the dustpan and just put a few simple colors in. Even if you only use three, you're probably okay. I like purple with my greens. And I need enough paint, which is hard to guess, to go all the way across here. So I'm thinking maybe for the sake of ease, and I want a little black too. The black, if you don't add it all in one puddle, even if you do add it all in one puddle, it's still not a bad thing. I can add more paint afterwards. But right now, so I've got some nice colors right there. And I'm going to grab my, another clean spatula. And I'm going to put some black paint there, just so we have something to slide. I like to do this on a dry canvas, generally speaking, and then add colors to fill in. But I also, also use the edge catcher held against the edge of the canvas and tip the canvas and make things all kinds of complicated. And right now I'm trying to do this without scaring you guys with an edge catcher. Although I may move on to that. And there's plenty of paintings done that way. So if I scrape my spatula, the paint off, on the edge, especially on these small canvases. And I can just quickly run my finger down the side. A light touch is really a good idea. 
And because my mixtures have Floetrol in it, which is a latex paint conditioner, which also levels the paint out, it tends to allow the paint to dry in a nice, even layer. I also use something called GAC 800 for heavier paints. I'm hoping that this isn't going to be terribly heavy, but I do use it for heavier paints. I'm going to throw that in my bucket. I'm not going to worry about my bottom. And I am going to start by moving all that paint down to one side. I'm going to put it all in the middle. I'm going to see that I want a little more copper. And I'm just going to squeeze the copper and the purple right in there. And I'm not going to worry about how it came out. I am probably, in fact, going to use every bit of paint that I could possibly get out of there and put it all on. This is not something you can worry about. I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did last time. I'm going to tip my canvas back and forth and up and down, keeping the drips from falling off right now. You can also tip it up. And I'm going to let some of this paint fall right onto that edge catcher. And then I'm going to tip it all down again. So it all goes down. Still no edge catcher. It's a paint catcher right at the moment. I'm going to turn my canvas one more time and see that there's something in there. When you see lumps, take them out. <laughs> now, usually I would lift that up and throw it back into the painting, but at this point, we're trying not to do that. So I am going to show you that you can take all that paint and put it right back on your canvas. I'm going to get that edge catcher out of my way. And I'm going to see that I've got something, large something, stuck right to the bottom of that. All right, so don't be afraid to put your hand behind the canvas. I'm going to grab anything on my turntable, on my tile. I'm going to grab everything dripping from underneath. Not that you need to worry about that. If you see that there's holes in the, in the designs on the sides of your canvas, don't worry about it. Just stick your finger in there, just ever so gently. Now, I'm going to tip where I see that there's a heavy flow of paint. And you can see that there's some some spots on the side of the canvas that aren't covered. You can see me just ever so slightly tapping in there. Now I have one little white spot on my horizon, which I kind of don't mind actually, but I think I could put something in there and it would be okay. So just a few dribbles. Now I love the skewer because the skewer can go wherever you want it to go. And it doesn't have to be complicated. And anywhere you see that little spot that the canvas is showing through, and now you have now you're done basically. You could let this dry overnight and you could add trees. I could try and add some trees. I don't really want to. <laughs> I'm afraid that I, I'm better off adding little tree branches the next day so that it doesn't interrupt the sky. By the way, if you're not really super overly thrilled about your sky, let me find a spatula. Oh, that wasn't what I was looking for. I just used my shorts. Um, you know what, I'm going to use a smaller spatula. I'm going to use a number five. If, you don't, if you're not completely thrilled about your sky, you can also swipe it and get a smoother pattern. And it may even break out in some cells. And once you do that with a little spatula, you're going to have paint that you can use where you want. The skies are never straight, or almost never straight, I'm sure. Somebody's seen a straight sky, including myself. You don't want to see any canvas. And I like that better. Not only do I like it better, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to make my little cloud. 
I'm going to probably throw that right in the bucket. Either that, or I'm going to wipe it off on my Lolafi silicone mat so I can peel it up later and do something with it. Let me check this out really quick. I'm going to put a little sun. Just going to let a drop run out. So I've got a little sun in my sky. I'm going to blow gently into the center of that and I'm going to see that it's not round. I'm going to find, make sure my skewer is clean. And I'm going to gently use the blunt end of this skewer to spiral around. And now we have a much bigger sun, but it's kind of cool. If you want to get fancy, just stick, just stick the, the sharp end of your skewer in and flick it a few times. And if you want it to be a darker colored sun, add a drop of something else. Now that white cloud at the top is kind of bumming me out. And we're out of time. And I want to tell you guys, if you know anybody who'd like some artwork, you can, uh, I do sell my artwork. And uh, my email address is at the top of the link tree underneath show more under the video. And I am just sticking my skewer in here and there where I feel like it. You don't need to, but I like to. <laughs> It's part of the fun, is to play with the designs. But stop before you ruin what you got. And you can tip a little bit, but I wouldn't do that because it's going to change everything. If I wanted to do that, I could. It's all tipping. I never did torch. I torch! I use heat to remove the bubbles in the paint. Oh, we've got three little hills there. That's so cute. All right, I like those three little hills. Now I'm going to torch to release the bubbles caught in the paint. I'm not lingering on any one particular spot for too long. I'm noticing that I have a few places that I can sort of see canvas. If I wanted to add any new colors to the sky, I would still do it. I would do it right now. As long as you've got a heavy layer of paint and you're not pulling down to canvas, you can still get away with stuff as long as you have not torched, which is not something I'm good at. All right, I love you guys, and there are 86,600 and some odd, eight, almost 86,700 subscribers on my YouTube channel, and I'm very happy that everybody's there. I don't think many people are getting notifications, so if you're looking to find me, go to my YouTube channel, Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Priscilla Batsell, and look for the community board and you will find tomorrow's video. Also, you will find on Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group on Facebook for students that I post tomorrow's video the night before. And uh, you're more than welcome to come and visit us there. There's other places, other things that you can find on the link tree, and there's all over print leggings and t-shirts with my, with my cool designs on them on Teespring. And uh, fineartamericanpixels.com are also where the Shop Now button on Expressionist Art Studio Gallery totes and more on Facebook will take you. I have over 1,360 videos, and I'm going to put the playlist links on the link tree. But you can find them under all playlists and creative playlists, and they're easy to go through. I love you guys. I hope you come again. Please share my videos by pressing the share button and finding your Pinterest page or to Facebook. And that would be very helpful since I'm not getting much in the way of publicity, and I could use some people watching me. I love you guys. I hope you come again. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Priscilla out.